So this next topic I want to talk about is the difference between what we call a centralized and a decentralized strategy. Now, you may inherently know this and never really processed it through or heard it called this before. So while these words may seem new to you, you probably understand the concept. So let's talk about it. A centralized structure is a business structure or an operational structure in which one person makes most, if not all of the decisions. What market are we in? What's the price point? What's our product? Now, in our case, we're in real estate, so we know that product. They're the one that provides the guidance, the strategic plan, the overall arching business acumen that your brokerage uses. Most small brokerages run or operate in a centralized manner in which the managing broker, if you are in another state other than Indiana, it's called the principal broker, that makes all of the decisions regarding most of the issues, all right? Very centralized, concentrated in one person. Now, with that now being known, it's gonna be very easy to guess <laughs> what a decentralized structure is, is when the decision-making is now made at various levels of the organization and by different people under the overall strategy of the head person, whether it's the CEO, uh, a managing member, whomever. So typically, decentralized brokerages are divided into smaller segments or groups, or sometimes you call them teams, that make it easier for you to measure the performance of the company and each individual within the company. So for instance, in Real University, we have a CTO, a Chief Technical Officer. We have a Chief Marketing Officer. They all make their own decisions based upon the CEO's overarching business model or operational model of growth. Real University, and most of you know me that I'm pretty much an open book. I'll tell most of you anything um, that you want to know. Real University has expanded into multiple states. That growth phase for us required a huge change in our operational strategy. When I started teaching way back in 03, I was a centralized operational strategy. It was just me. I answered the phone. I processed credit cards. I taught the class. I wrote the courses, all of that. During that growth period, it became obvious to me that I could no longer handle all aspects of this growing company. We onboarded about 2015, a chief technical officer who writes the website and the program, does all of the programming. All of the technical decisions are made by him. Now, he knows based on my strategy that we are growing. So he is continually evolving the website. He is continually looking at new technologies that we can bring into the website to help us grow. And he makes the decisions. I get people that come to me all the time and say, you know, are you using a tracking pixel in Facebook? Uh, dude, I have no idea. We are, by the way. But because that is a technical issue, I would say what you really need to do is talk to our chief technical officer. Or I get people that say, oh, we do videos. Can we help you uh, get your videos? Oh, you might want to talk to our marketing officer as to whether we use Google reviews. Do we use Trustpilot? Do we use any of those other uh, marketing uh, platforms? Well, that's going to be under his purview, but he knows that we're growing because I have put us in a dedicated growth mode. 
So we are a very decentralized system. And I'm going to tell you now, it is hard switching from centralized to decentralized. It, it, it took us probably three years. Uh, I had went through the same growth problem with the modeling group. Most of you are in that same boat. You're centralized, meaning they all want to talk to the managing broker or you decide, are we going to use showing times? Are we going to use broker bay? And are we going to switch? Well, same thing can happen within your brokerage. Now you want to have a hundred agents in four locations. You may have to change your decentralization or change to a decentralized strategy so that somebody in another geographic office can make best judgments for that area. Even though it follows your growth model, it may not be your decision or may not be your main decision. Um, I remember I recently had a deal with an agent that called me one of my own agents and was asking me questions. So I called the team manager and I'm like, hey, what's going on? And that team manager literally said something to me that struck me that I never really thought of, but that was the sign that I had successfully went from the centralized to a decentralized. That team leader asked me, he said, why did this get to you? This should not have been a issue that went all the way to you. I told them how to do the, uh, write the purchase agreement. We had discussions. We even talked to the other agent about it. Why did this get all the way up to you? Because this is not something you should be handling. This is a team leader conversation. That statement, while some of you are giving me that fisheye look, really struck me as being a key indicator that I had successfully created or managed to shift into this decentralized. And yes, he was correct. Why was something like this coming up to me when it should have been his team lead or the team uh, manager making that decision? Because I'm very comfortable with the team manager's decisions. He was trained by me. He went through our management program. He went through all of this. So I'm comfortable in that guy making decisions because he had the proper training to have it bypass him and come up to me um, really kind of displayed that to me. So whether you want to adopt a centralized or a decentralized system highly depends on your legal structure, depends on your goals, it depends on your operational strategy, and if you want to continuously improve, you cannot rely on a centralized uh, strategy. It just won't succeed. All right. Think about, think of Apple. There are product managers. There's the, you know, North American division CEO. There's a Europe CEO that those are all decentralized systems that have to be in place. If growth is going to be your key, because you just eventually will run out of time. All right. So centralized has a concentration of power. They also are burdened with the accountability. Everything is on you. All right. Now, what I'm talking about is the business. I don't mean just the agents. As the managing broker, agent screws up. Yes, you have accountability. But what I'm talking about is if our website goes down, that's a technical, that's going to be on the CTO. He and I are going to have a conversation on why his website went down. What happened? What did we do? What did we add? All right. So the burden of accountability is more leveled or flattened with a decentralized system. Whereas in a centralized system, the buck stops here. Motivation is also very demotivated by a centralized system, in my opinion because those agents can exert less power. If there's only one guy that can make decisions to help plead their case, then typically it's either all or nothing. However, in a decentralized decision-making 
system, powers can be dispersed to other people. And I guess that's what I was talking about. When Christian made a decision to help that agent, that agent shouldn't have called me on that decision. One, because he already had the answer from a manager and should have known that. But now that allows the Christian to feel part of the community and part of the team because those decision-making powers are now evened out or spread to their appropriate position that they need to be, all right? I believe that this is probably one of the key items you need to think about. And unfortunately, I'm preaching to the choir because all you in here probably already have your managing broker, probably already already are working, so it's a little too late. But this probably ought to be one of the key issues that it out of the gate for new businesses, all right? Because you want to be able to create that decentralized and I guess I say that with the caveat that most businesses want to grow. Once again, I go back to the sole proprietor, Billy Joe, Jim Bob doing it all himself and they comfortable with that and they want to just create this nice lifestyle business, then maybe that's not as crucial. But when you first start, if your idea is to ever have people working for you, you probably ought to want to instill the decentralized system out of the gate, all right? So there are a whole bunch of reasons. Uh, management influence, uh, procedures in a centralized system are manually implemented where in a decentralized system, they are uh, recorded and memorialized and done as a procedure. Communication. Communication in a centralized system is mainly vertical. Managing broker calls every one of the agents. However, in a centralized or decentralized misspoke system, communication extends in all directions. I've got to let all the managers know, then all the managers let the agents know. All right. Time consumption. Once again, centralized is very hard. Matter of fact, it becomes impossible at some point because you one person can't make all of the decisions. Decentralized allows for time allocation to be more appropriately disseminated amongst the managers. Also, the stability of a decentralized system is stronger. Once again, if you don't believe me, look at Apple. Apple was a billion dollar company. Steve Jobs was great. Steve Jobs passes away, hands it down to Tim Cook, and the company is still there. Still a billion dollar company because they replaced one person, not all of the decision makers or all of the history and knowledge that was contained within those people. Same thing with brokerages. Managing broker goes away if it's centralized. A lot of the agents just go away. Business ends up dying out. So the sustainability of that business is not as strong inside of a centralized business. So that is a very key factor that you probably need to be thinking about right now. If you're sitting in here taking this course, and you want to be in the growth phase, or you are in the growth phase, you better start thinking about this system right now, because this is going to be one of the major components on success. You cannot be sustainable, growing, and successful without moving to a decentralized system of management within your brokerage, period.